Okay, Gary, welcome to Marxism. Uh, I've just had a very interesting talk from you about uh, protest and politics in the US. I was just wondering if you could summarize some of the themes that, uh, that uh, you, you touched on in your talk. Um, you mentioned how in recent uh, months Obama's kind of made a, a turn to his base. He's uh, put forward an amnesty for Latino immigrants. He's uh, endorsed gay marriage. Um, obviously, there's an election coming up. Is this too little, too late, or what do you think? What do you make of that? Um, I think that it will be uh, that, that will probably be enough for a lot of his base that want um, to, even if they're disappointed by him, when they see what else is on offer in terms of Romney and the Republicans, will uh, probably uh, uh, many of them will probably come to the polls. He did it because he understands that there's a deep disaffection and deep disillusionment. He could have done them at any time. He needs to do them now because he ran on open change. He ran as a transformative character. And yet, here we are, four years on. Many of the things that he could do with the strike of the pen, he hasn't done. And so he needed to evoke, look, this is who I can be about. So that's, um, that's why that happened. That's who it was for. And um, I think for his base, it's it's uh, it's a little bit of it's a little bit of red meat. Um, he's still the favourite to win, but not by much. Okay. Well, what about the other side then? The Republicans had this bizarre and at times farcical um, selection contest. They've plumped for Mitt Romney. Now, obviously, it's a money game, especially with the primaries and the changes in the U.S. legislation that allow anonymous funding of campaigns. So his money helps, but at the same time, he's seen as the candidate of the one percent. Uh, this is a time of economic crisis in the states. How do you think that's going to play out? Well, he's got a real problem in terms of his uh, uh, presentation as a, as a rich man who's just not really um, in, in touch with working people. He, but he also has a much more important problem, which is that he made his money as a venture capitalist, the uh, outsourcer-in-chief, the Obama's called him. Um, and so the nature of capitalism that he was involved in is not actually even that popular among people who say they like capitalism. The Republican base... Uh, central to the public base is white working class men. And that's not the kind of capitalists they go for. They go for producers, they go for manufacturers, they go for people <laughs> who make things that you can feel. And so uh, it's been shown that tax on his history as a venture capitalist um, have worked. Uh, and it's not just been Obama who's been attacking him. His Republican uh, counterparts during the primaries also attacked him, actually in many ways much more viciously than Obama. They called him a vulture capitalist. Um, um, Rick Perry had a little ringtone that said, uh, with Romney's voice, I like firing people. So um, there is a, a, a real sense in which it's a, a liability for him. On the other hand, uh, what he does have going for him is that many of the Republican base hate Obama. Uh, they hate him deeply. And uh, for some people, the fact that he's a businessman, regardless of the kind of business he is, um, uh, makes people think that maybe he can set this ship straight. The one area where Romney, uh, where Romney beats Obama is on stewardship of the economy. And that's a very worrying thing for Obama. We've got both the Democrats and the Republicans in, in this face-off, as we have every four years. There's a new factor that's occurred at the end of last year, which is the Occupy movement in the States. Um, you, men you mentioned in your talk how the Occupy movement has already shaped the language of the two parties. Um, could you expand on that and also say a little bit about what Occupy has done on the ground in terms of organizing the mass of Americans? Yeah, I mean, uh, Occupy kind of uh, reoriented um, the national conversation from small government to inequality. Uh, before, it was only really the Tea Party that was making any running uh, in terms of uh, public conversation about what the problem was. And suddenly, with uh, uh, Occupy Wall Street, there was a kind of realization uh, or a crystallization of the idea that, look, some of these people are really uh, taking the piss out of us and uh, we, we have to fight them. And so it was a, a, a different understanding of who that we are. Not we the taxpayers, we the people, we the citizens, we the 99%. And that proved uh, extraordinarily potent. It enabled them to um, 
uh, it, it, it gave Obama a language that he didn't have before. Uh, it gave him a framework and a base from which to compete which he didn't have before. And what's been interesting about Occupy uh, Wall Street is that it really took place without any real reference to electoral politics, and might be too politics. And so they have continued. People think that they've gone, but actually they are, um, uh, they are involved um, uh, in uh, fighting housing um, uh, foreclosures. Uh, they've been um, uh, very involved um, in kind of a range of social justice movements. A lot of them went over into kind of Trayvon Martin and anti-racism uh, work. Interestingly, very few of them are going into electoral work. I'm sure they'll vote for Obama, most of them, but they're, they're not going to waste their time uh, actually kind of um, uh, organizing work. And so, in many ways, it's moved on from defending the physical space of the occupation to pursuing the, um, uh, the, uh, the principles of the, uh, the occupation movement. And that has been... Uh, uh, really twofold. One has been about home foreclosures and the other one has been about banks. Okay, well, I hope, let's hope the movement carries on growing in the States and offers that choice to the American people that, as you pointed out, was lacking with the uh, Obama and um, Romney contest. So. Thanks. Okay.